Many of you may recognize this as a profiling jig frame that supports the router. And this is the rotating jig, which holds the neck so that you can get this profile on the neck. Last video I made of this subject, I did not have the knobs on the router and it was actually turned sideways. Since then, I've reorientated the knobs so that I can easily work this router. And this all came about because my son watched my last video. He did not like the way I was working the router and reaching inside here, working the rotating carriage. He said it was a safety issue. So I listened and I did something about it. That's when I dreamed up the idea of putting a motor on the end of this to rotate it back and forth. And all I had to do was control the router. My first attempt, two wheels with a connecting shaft between it, wasn't the right way to go. It would get into a bind, just wouldn't work right. So I dreamed up something else. When I originally made this profiling jig, I used wooden dowels as my axis and bungees to hold it up. I'm still going to use bungees, but I'm going to replace the wooden dowel with a half inch rod. I even added a knob on the end for rotating, but that still only left you one hand to operate the router. And I really had to make sure things were square because the cams were binding on the end if it wasn't all squared up. You couldn't go with a direct drive motor because this goes up and down as it rotates ever so slightly. You'd have to have a way of keeping the motor from turning as this goes up and down. And I also thought about a big gear turning a little gear to get all the rotation you needed. You'd need almost 180 degree. And with the direct drive and with this method, you would need a motor that could be reversed. So then I found a reciprocating linear actuator and thought, if I can get this to go back and forth, a rack and pinion set up, I could get enough rotation out of that. And it could float too. So I'm gonna show you everything it took to come up with the solutions. I thought about using an old V-belt that had notches in it that could work kind of like a rack and pinion. But didn't like it that well. So I found this plastic or nylon gear and rack on Car McMaster. This hole was originally 5 16 and I drilled it out to a half an inch and I put a notch in it for a pin so it wouldn't slip on the shaft. Instead of using wooden dowels, I bought half inch bolts long. I'm leaving the threads on there for now in case I need them in the future. This hole will be used to fasten it to the carriage so that it will not turn inside the carriage. This hole I put a roll pin in so that this gear can slide up to that. Now it won't slip on the shaft either. So next what I've done is taken some washers that are bigger than the bearings. These are the bearings I'm going to use. And so that It'll rotate freely. I need spacers, another spacer, another washer. Now this is gonna be on both sides. And retainers that can be locked down with an Allen wrench on each end. Before I can assemble this whole thing, I have to put these on, slip over the bearings, and this is what will hold the rack in place so that it will be up against the gear all the time as it rides up and down. So the bearing is a one and an eighth outer dimension. So that's drilled to fit right over that. Put this one on the other side. Now I can put these washers on there and the retainers. Okay, this is what we've got so far. So this rack gear somehow needs to be 
kept against the gear as it moves up and down. So I've taken this piece of wood that will hold the gear, made it fit right in there. I'm gonna double side tape that to the inside of the wood. So as you can see, the gear is down inside of a slot. And this gear fits up in there. At this point, I have no idea how long that has to be yet. I could probably guesstimate it, but I'm gonna leave it the full length for now. So there has to be a way to keep this up against that gear. And I've come up with this retainer that's gonna fasten onto the bottom. And these bearings will push up against it. This is the cartridge that the bearings are on. There's a shaft in there that they're rotating. These hold the shaft in place. And there's a hole in the bottom for this adjusting screw to go in. A lot of what I'm doing here has been put together with these little bitty screws. Now here's something you may not know. That these common th American threads, smaller ones, 1032, 632, you can cut them off and make them shorter. There's a cutting edge right here. You just pick the appropriate one, thread it in to wherever you want to cut it off. I want to make these real short. Press it together. Make sure you don't get your fingers in here. And it cuts right off. You back it out. Cleans the threads up. Now that I've got the cartridge all ready, I'm going to install that into the carriage. I've got a couple spacers I need to put on there. Screw in the retainer. Fasten it to the carriage. Let's install the rack gear. So let's see how it goes. Looks like that could work. So to figure out what stroke I needed, I put the rack gear in there and marked with a pencil lead, then brought it back the other way and marked again and I came up with a length of four and an eighth. I set the stroke of the linear actuator to four and an eighth of an inch by adjusting the turnbuckle and the rocker arm. To fasten the rack to the linear actuator, I put a right angle device on here that will fit right over that. So you can see that the initial test run is successful. It goes from ear to ear, about 180 degrees like I want it to. But the motor does not have enough torque. It's too sluggish at the end of the stroke. So I'm going to have to change out the motor. And I don't want this sticking a foot and a half behind the device. So I'm going to tweak it. When I first put together the linear actuator, I had it sticking way out here past the back of this. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to take and turn it around and mount it over here to where it's all more compact. To do that, I have to take the profile jig and mount it on a board that has a platform that sticks out that the actuator can actually mount onto. But there needs to be a hole right here for this to work up and down into. So these four tabs right here are to help keep the whole thing in place when it's all put together. So with the hole put in it right here, I still have room for the actuator out here and this can go up and down inside that hole. The original motor that came with the linear actuator is 24 volt, 120 RPM, it came with the controller that slowed it way down, but even at its slowest speed, it was way too fast. And it didn't have enough torque 
to keep turning with the load on it. So I swapped it out for a grill rotisserie motor that only turns two RPMs per minute and has more torque to it. I've taken the original cover for the rotisserie motor and rigged it up to where it'll cover it back up. Have my wiring in there, even have a ground wire connected. This will all tuck in there nicely. I'm gonna change this arrangement right here. With this coming off the top and pulling here, it's always pulling that over to the side. So I'm gonna set it up to where it's pulling from straight above. So I added a more stable solid top and a way for the bungees to be directly above the device instead of off to the side. I've got a set of blank cams mounted on the end of the carriage and before we profile a neck, I'm going to see if we can copy one again with the motor and the mechanism. But before I do, I have to remove the bearings from the end of the frame. I'm going to mount the neck in that I want to copy, center it up, lock it down. So I take inch and a half long hold down plates, one at the first fret, one at the twelfth fret. These simulate how far the router will stick out. I bought a whole box of these pencil lids off of Amazon, two millimeter. Now they're about four inches long. There's 108 of them and they got a point on the end. Okay, let's see how this thing works. I've got my sharpened pencil lead. It goes right into that hole right there. You want that hole to where the pencil lead will slide through smoothly. And let's rotate this thing. All right, we'll do the other end. Cut those out and reinstall everything. With the neck we copied still on the carriage and the cams we've shaped reinstalled back on the carriage, with the straight edge, even with the top of the rails, we should get an inch and a half down all the way across. And we're on the money on both ends. So now it's time to pull this neck out and put this one in so it can be shaped. got the entire thing clamped down so it won't move got a foot switch on the floor that operates the rotation motor and I can use both hands to operate the router Okay, this is the neck I just finished. I hand sanded it even. So I've got another one in here I'm gonna do. And I'm not gonna hand sand it, I'm gonna show you the difference. Here it is, still on the jig. Yeah, it's got some tooling marks. There's still enough meat on there. We can sand those right out. The neck on the right has been sanded to the finished shape. The one on the left still has the tooling marks. It still has just a few thousands left on there. Once you sand it down, we'll be just right. 
I think the upgrades on this jig worked the way they were supposed to. The motor went a little slower than I would have liked. So if I continue to use this jig in the future, I'm thinking about making it manually foot operated instead of using a motor at all. That way I can stop it where I want and run at the speed I want. But I'm actually thinking about trying those router bits that they make that have the neck profiles on it. Giving that a shot. So let's see what I do in the future. Stay tuned. Marvelous.